What is up, our fellow Forgelings? Brandon Green and Ben Forty are here of Metal Forge Reviews, the show where you can get the most out of your metal releases. We are here today to talk about subgenres of death metal. Hell yes, dude. As our viewers know, we spend a lot of time crafting best of metal lists, but we thought it would be really cool and interesting to put together our favorite death metal albums by subgenre to get some really neat conversations going. If you're looking for the best of metal releases in the form of top lists, best bands at Bandcamp, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. You don't ever want to miss a Metal Forge Reviews video. Hell yeah, man. Death metal is something that we do not talk about enough on this channel. So we figured that we would each pick our favorite death metal records for tech, progressive, old school, Swedish, blackened, and brutal death metal. Yeah, man, we've got some great picks here today. I'm very excited to talk about all these. And we want to hear what you have to say. So let us know in the comments what your favorite death metal albums are by subgenre. And look forward to more lists just like this one that dive further into the realms of metal. Let's get to our first pick. Cryptopsy, None So Vile, a brilliant album from absolute pioneers in their genre. Their 1996 release of None So Vile is utterly punishing. It's like being fed guts through a trough of a, at a human slaughterhouse. Cryptopsy immediately made a name for themselves by being an absolutely legendary band right from the get-go. Their debut album, Blasphemy Made Flesh, is crushing. The lineup of Lord Worm, uh, La Vesseur, Langlois, and Monnier is just absolutely ridiculous. Lord Worm is kind of panned in the community for whatever reason, but I think he's a fantastic vocalist and showman. Flo Monnier was on the cutting edge of tech death metal drummers, and he really paved the way for percussionists in this genre. That breakdown in Graves of Our Fathers, oh my god, it's one of the heaviest things I've ever heard in my life. It sounds like someone set off a bomb near your head. Cryptopsy has come a long way since their 1992 release of Blasphemy Made Flesh and their 96 release of None So Vile. I haven't really paid much attention to them after In Then You'll Beg, but these albums, their early work, especially None So Vile, absolutely legendary stuff. I'm so glad you put Cryptopsy on your list. Graves of Our Fathers is, I would argue, probably one of the most heaviest fucking things that has ever happened in metal, period. My pick for best tech death is Psychroptic, The Inherited Repression. This came out on February 10th, 2012. Easily one of the best tech death bands out there today. Australian-based Psychroptic have earned their spot as titans among the genre landscape. This band is the real deal, and their fifth full-length, The Inherited Repression, fires on all cylinders of blistering death metal precision. This whole album is littered with amazing riffs, raw technical drumming, blistering vocals and bass licks. It is no wonder that this album sits confidently among some of the best tech death albums ever released. I am definitely not a big fan of this genre overall because mostly the, the genre plays into the tropes of the look what I can do aesthetic without respecting great songwriting. I don't know, sue me. Psychroptic though, demolished that stereotype with extremely well-written songs that know how to show off the band's talent while giving the listener something to consistently want to come back. Great record. That is an unbelievable album. I think you hit the nail right on the head in terms of tech death, look what I can do, show off my skills, blah, blah, blah. Psychroptic just absolutely destroys the songwriting though. Unbelievable melodies in that, unbelievable talent, and they know how to get it out of each other's way too. Just an unbelievable record overall. We 
We are moving on to the brutal death metal subgenre. And that pick for me includes Impaled Mondo Medical. Bands like Carcass and Exhumed left a huge mark in the death metal landscape. One of the bands that carried on the legacy of these legendary death metal acts is Oakland, California's very own Impaled. Honestly, when my friend Jeremy showed me the album cover for Mondo Medical, I was pretty intrigued. It is by far the most disgusting and horrifying album cover I've seen to date. I think a lot of people kind of can connect with that fear of medical malpractice or dealing with anesthesia awareness where you wake up under anesthesia but you can't move. That's pretty much what this band plays on those fears of. Thematically, Impaled doesn't take themselves very seriously, but their music is utterly groundbreaking. As a guitarist, I'm stunned by some of the complicated riffs that these guys are able to pull off in the speed and tempo at which they're able to do it. It's unreal. The last album was in 2013, with the dead still dead remain. And one of the founding members, Ross Sewage, is actually an Exhumed now, pretty cool. So I'm not sure we'll ever see another Impaled record, but if you haven't heard of them and you're really into the brutal death metal category, stop everything you're doing, put on Impaled's Mondo Monacal right now. Fuck yes, dude, reaching into the brutal catacombs with Impaled, I love it. My pick for best brutal death metal is Dying Fetus, Destroy the Opposition. This was released October 3rd, 2000. I cannot believe that this album is now 20 years old and holy shit, is it still brutal as ever. Destroy the Opposition was Dying Fetus's entrance into embracing political, lyrical themes instead of the typical intense gore of their earlier albums, which I'm not complaining about, honestly. It was this record that the band stepped up their technical game and made one of the best death metal records of all time. Destroy the Opposition captured Dying Fetus at the pinnacle of their power, in my opinion, with an absolutely stellar lineup that unfortunately did not stick around. The brilliant riffing and vocals of John Gallagher, beastly bass and vocals of Jason Netherton, and absolutely phenomenal drumming of Kevin Talley. Destroy the Opposition lays waste to so many other death metal records. Relentless technicality, slamming death metal riffs. This album is insanely addictive with it's no fat, crazy riffs, and unyielding brutality. One of my favorite lyrics from the album is from the title track. Such a brutal and powerful lyric to put aside such a slamming record and poke fun at social and political issues. If you haven't given this record a spin, stop everything and do so. It's a fucking beast. In utter classic, with Destroy the Opposition, dude. I remember the first time I ever heard Dying Fetus was pissing in the mainstream on a Relapse Records, uh, I believe they called it Contaminated Compilation Album, and I was like, oh my God, what is this? This is unbelievable. An absolute classic in the uh, subgenre of brutal death metal. I, I think Next up, we are getting into the blackened death metal category. For me, Behemoth and Goat Whore are the two bands that typically come to mind with utter immediacy whenever I hear the subgenre blackened death metal. Behemoth has always been a band that wants to showcase their anti-Christianity with the blackened elements, but their sound is definitely fluctuated over the years, even with Nurgle's more recent ventures into folk music. Now, Brandon, I was originally going to put Demigod on here just because of my familiarity with this, but you told me to check out The Satanist, and I'm so glad that I did, and it immediately became the album that I had to put on here. What made you want me to check that one out? Man, I'm so glad you did check it out because The Satanist, is it's a special record. It's the returning album for Nurgle after actually his leukemia diagnosis. And it's easily my favorite album in their entire discography still to this day. There's so many vividly rendered moments that shine brightly against such a horrible experience. And to me, there's just a ton of respect there. The music shows nothing but pure fucking triumph. Absolutely love that album. I'm glad you checked it out. 
Yeah, man, I'm totally picking up exactly what you're putting down. The songwriting is so concise on that record. And I love the bass tone, uh, by the way. I'm a sucker for a, a gnarly bass tone that just cuts right through the mix. And ooh, that album has that in spades. They really kind of ease back on the ferocity and replace it with a lot more atmosphere, strong writing, and it suits them very well. And where I've always kind of pictured them as like a kind of just a super brutal, fast death metal band, The Satanist is absolutely deserving of a place in our favorites of blackened death metal. My pick for best blackened death metal record is Goat Whore, Constricting the Rage of the Merciless. This was released July 8th, 2014. Easily my favorite record of all of the Goat Whore records. New Orleans-based Goat Whore established their fantastic sound on their strongest and most varied record to date. The follow-up after their 2012 Blood for the Master, the American blackened death metal band avoided the southern sounds of stoner doom and fully leaned into black black metal, thrash, and blues into their death metal sound. This album is filled with songs about deicide, the apocalypse, bloodshed, sex with Satan, everything you would want in a blackened death metal record. Fans of early Skeleton Witch would definitely be at home with this album. This fantastic record is equal parts hilarious and catchy, dripping with the ooze and atmosphere of haunted swamps, virgin sacrifices, and demonic orgies. Ridiculous concepts for sure, but if you're leaning into something evil, you might as well have some fucking fun with with it, right? Malevolent Creation came out with a monstrous record in their 19 with their 1991 debut album, The Ten Commandments. But their 1992 follow-up, Retribution, is really what brought the band to a much more focused sound. I love the guitar tone on this record. It sounds like a buzzsaw with the giant scoop in the mids. And every time there's a tremolo section, it sounds like you're getting run over by a lawnmower. And the vocals sound amazing, so much more cleaner and crisper than on the Ten Commandments. I mean, this genre was really in its infancy at the time, and I think Malevolent Creation definitely made some waves early on in their career. It's not my favorite album by them, I think I would say The Will to Kill is probably my favorite album by them. They're kind of later stuff. But these guys were just at the cutting edge, like I said. They've been releasing some great records in the last 30 or so years that these guys have been on the scene. And it's crazy to think that they've been around for so damn long. And I think Brandon's band is probably another band that has been around for a long time, too. What do you say, Brandon? I say you're right, Ben, because, well, first of all, Malevolent Creation is just an absolutely phenomenal band. Riff fucking city. My old school death metal pick is Obituary Cause of Death. Released September 19th, 1990, considered one of the most important and classic albums in the history of death metal, Obituary are still releasing fantastic metal albums today. Cause of Death is the one I constantly return to and think about when I think of old school death metal, to be honest. I love Obituary's filthy and groovy approach to the genre, much more so than the technical and brutal counterparts of the early death metal scene. I'd argue that John Tardy is one of the most iconic death metal vocal styles out of anyone in the early death metal bands in the 90s. Don't get me wrong, I love old school death metal all around, but there is something innately special about Obituary to me. When I listen to them, all of my senses are completely in tune with everything that I love about practical effects, music, and creativity of the 80s horror cult movies. Why do you eat people? Not people, brains. I absolutely love this record. If you haven't heard it yet, I'm jealous because I would love to go back and revisit it for the first time. That is indeed an amazing classic for 1990. Those guys were just, they were leaning into something that people just didn't understand yet. So for our next subgenre, we are now focusing on the Swedish death metal subgenre. And as you can see, my next pick is very clearly written on my chest. There was no way that we could do a death metal segment and not talk about my favorite Swedish death metal band, Dismember. 
it was just hard for me to kind of pick an album to focus on really because their catalog is stacked front to back with fantastic records. So I went with Massive Killing Capacity simply due to its timelessness. This member was one of those rare groups that had a lineup that barely changed over the course of the 30 some odd years that the band had been together. Founding members Fred Etzby and Dave Blomquist are huge inspirations to my playing and my writing. Their ability to blend ultra melodic passages with grueling and arduous death metal inspired riffs just make just makes me want to jump into that giant mechanized death machine on the front cover of the album and lay waste to racists everywhere i almost put the god that never was on this list simply due to how good that album is from front to back never mind that intro to where no ghost is holy like holy shit mind blowing but massive killing capacity just barely squeaks by in terms of how good the album really is so if you have yet to check out either of these albums definitely put them on a playlist you'll thank me later just want to say i greatly greatly approve of brandon's next pick <laughs> Amazing pick, Ben. Dismember is by far one of the best Swedish death metal bands. People who watch this channel know that we love that buzzsaw guitar tone. So my pick is naturally going to be the founding of that tone. My pick is Entombed, The Left Hand Path, released June 4th, 1990. As I've said, those who watch this channel know I love HM2 buzzsaw guitar tones and look no further than the unholy grail that is Left Hand Path. This album is easily one of the best death metal records of all time with its fantastic atmosphere, amazing riffing, brutal harsh vocals, and iconic production. This album sounds like a dank crypt in the best way, and to this day, I listen to this album on constant rotation in the fall while I'm binging horror movies. <laughs> Left Hand Path was actually in Tomb's debut full length, surprisingly, and easily the defining record of that Swedish buzzsaw guitar tone. It's no surprise that this record is actually number 82 on Rolling Stone's 100 Greatest Metal Albums of All Time. It's easily earned that spot. Fun fact, for those of you video game nerds like us, track two, Drowned, is actually in Grand Theft Auto 4 on the radio station Liberty City Hardcore. Amazing record. Ah, uh, yes, the HM2, good old Swedish sound. How can you go wrong? with this member and entombed you can't This band laid low for their first couple of releases and then seemed to take the metal world by storm with their 2005 album From Mars to Sirius, and that is the album that I'd like to focus on. If you ask me, this is essential listening for anyone that enjoys heavy ass music that can take you on a journey. In this instance, the journey is an interplanetary odyssey with a pod of whales as your Sherpas. Some of the breakdowns in this record really do feel like you're interacting with the heaviest matter of the universe. Outside of the music, I really love the themes and messages that are addressed on this album. Climate change, ecology, spiritual anguish, the human condition, etc. It's all just so humanizing. Gojira is going to go down in the history books as one of the most groundbreaking metal bands of all time, for sure. You heard it here, folks. Gojira is absolutely fantastic. Well-deserved spot on this list. When I heard Backbone, it just absolutely destroyed my backbone. To this day, I've been completely addicted to Gojira. Amazing band. My pick, Opeth Blackwater Park, released February 27th, 2001. I remember when this album came out, I was actually a freshman in high school, and it absolutely blew my mind that you can mix the devastation of death metal harsh vocals with beautiful clean sections and singing. The long compositions and insane metal riffing kept me constantly coming back to this record and discovering new things time and time again. I listened to Blackwater Park on constant rotation, and I'd argue that it's easily my favorite Opeth 
record, period. You could spend your time hating on Opeth, sure, for leaving their death metal sound behind, but that is not the point of this video. Opeth are masters of their craft and have proven that point time and time again with every progressive death metal masterpiece up to Heritage. To this day, when the harsh vocals come on in the drapery falls, I get chills with the atmosphere and emotion of this record. One of my all time favorites. If you haven't heard it yet, check it out. I know we talk a lot about doom and black metal, but what a sick list we have here, man. Some of these albums are just absolutely phenomenal. If some of these death metal albums sound cool to you too, definitely head down to the description for the Spotify playlist link and give some of these records a spin if you haven't already. And if you have, spin them again, why not? And let us know what your thoughts are. Dude, there's some fantastic modern death metal out there. You just have to look for it. Definitely check out our 2020 best death metal records to find some of our favorites from last year. The card should be above my head right about now. Yes, I just saw the card there and I clicked it. Awesome. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing what you all have to say about our picks and some of your picks as well. Definitely leave them in the comments down below. Group your picks by our subgenre. Prague, old school, brutal, Swedish, blackened, tech, or you can put a subgenre that we didn't talk about or think about or mention. Yeah, like sloppy pig slam death. That's definitely not a thing. Yeah, it is, dude. Check it out. <laughs> right. We've got a lot of really cool segments coming out this year. If you want to know what's coming out on our channel, follow us on social media, where we post our weekly schedule every Monday. We've got over 100 videos on our channel with all kinds of metal discussions, reactions, reviews. And if you dig what you see here, definitely please share this. Be sure to subscribe. The gods are watching over us, friends. Go with them. Be one with nature and take care. Bye-bye.